welcome to Straight Talk with Carla Lissa Thorne. And today I have with me my favorite friend, Terry Brock. And we're going to be talking about technology and relationships. And actually, relationship marketing. So welcome, Terry. Carly, it's great to be with you. I love having you on because we have the most fun banter. And to me, a great show is having a fun, witty banter. So welcome. I like it. It's really good to do that. Keeps it alive. Yes, it does. So you are doing a lot of relationship marketing these days. So let's talk about technology and relationship marketing. So what are some of the things that you're doing these days? Well, uh, lately I've been doing a lot of speaking and blogging about how people can use the technology that's out there today and we couple it with the, the tried and true uh, principles of relationship marketing. So you put them together and really what it's about, it's what you've been doing, Carly, all your life, connecting with people in a very positive way, helping others, making a difference in the world. And right now we can use technology, we can leverage it as never before. As an example, you and I are using Google Plus Hangouts right now to do this. Mm -hmm. What a great tool to be able to connect with people, be able to broadcast it live. Like right now, anyone that comes to this channel could watch this on YouTube, on Google Plus Hangouts, around the world. Literally millions, billions of people could watch this and have a great time. And um, I want you to know I'm going to pay for this today, the call that we've got. You just put it on my bill and we'll be fine with that. Isn't it great that what we can do today? Of course, there's no charge, so that's why I can do it. <laughs> Exactly. And not only are there Google Hangouts, there's Skype, and there's you know so many innovative tools these days. And what I love about it is, like you said, there's people all over the world that can watch this. And it makes it really great because we can reach people that wouldn't ordinarily be able to be able to watch this. And not only that, in the comfort of their own homes. I mean, what a great way. I mean, people are so busy today, and people are saying, oh, I don't have time to read, I don't have time to listen, I don't have time to do this. And they're saying that they cannot reach new knowledge and now they can. Yep, exactly. I think it's wonderful that we can do it. When you think about it today, if someone is willing to work and they're willing to put in the time, the money, and the effort, they can learn tremendous amounts of information. I mean, when people say, oh gee, I can't afford, I don't have time to read and yet they go home and they're watching TV all the time or they say I don't have time for education I don't have the money for it somebody's got to pay for me and I think wait a minute how come you're wasting your money on all these new shoes and these new clothes and you're doing this and that uh, focus on really building your brain and that really helps enormously to be prepared for the future and where we want to go I think that's part of uh, building relationships that we have to be the very best that we can be so that when we reach out to others and we connect with them there's value and there's value that we can give them and the tools today I think are fabulous that we can do what we're able to do today as never before in history it's a, a really good thing I think matter of fact Carla you picked a very good time to be alive to be born. Could have been born 200, 300 years ago. Well, you popped on the planet at just the right time, and uh, we're just uh, glad you're here. Well, I am glad for that, too, and I'm not that young. However, I agree. The technologies that we have today, the tools we have today are absolutely phenomenal, and I really do think anybody today can go to YouTube, Vimeo. There's so many resources out there and learn. They can plug in anything in the search engine and say, I want to learn about biology, I want to learn about chemistry, I want to learn about mathematics, I want to learn about technology, and it's at the resources, at their fingertips. So there's no excuse for not learning these days. There used to be an excuse, I can't get to school, I can't, you know, I don't have the finances for college. Nowadays, there's so many people like you and I and others that are willing to give value for others to go do this. And that is why I don't monetize my videos. I, these for me, this is first of all fun, and it's a way for me to give value to my clients and to others that are not my clients. It's a way to give back. It's a way to actually allow others to learn. And I love putting people on like you. And one of the things I love about you is not only do you have the knowledge about marketing and other things, but you're also very techie savvy. You're always learning new little technology things. And you're fun. And to me, these have to be fun. I do not want to listen to a boring podcast or listen to or watch a boring video. They have to have a fun element to it. Yeah, agreed. I think that's an important point. And those that are watching this, think about what Carly just said. You don't want boring. You would want to make sure that it's fun. That means you also communicate your message. You put the two together. It's not either or. It's both and. You put those two together. Make it fun and stay away from that terrible B word, 
boring, you know. And if it's boring, now there might be a part. I don't know. There could be a point. Let's say it's eleven o'clock at night. You can't go to sleep. There's plenty of boring stuff out there that you could get. But that may outside of that, you probably don't want it. And so you want to make sure that it's fun. It's funny. It's entertaining, but packed with a lot of information. I love the way that Earl Nightingale said it. He said there is no such thing as a dull subject, but there are dull speakers. And so it's on whatever it is that you want to present, you can take it and spice it up. You can make it exciting. You can make it fun. Uh, who was it? I think it was long, long ago. Tallulah Bankhead, the actress, said that she could take the New York telephone book and go through reading it and express every emotion known to mankind just by reading the telephone book. And you think if you could take something like that and put all kinds of emotion into it, you can do it with whatever subject that you have. And what that does is it helps people to say, hey, I want to know more about this. I want to learn this more. And learning is really not just a good idea, it's essential. If you're not l engaged in lifelong learning or what I even like to call day-long learning, keep learning every day throughout the day. Saturate your mind with good, useful information then you can really get ahead and do much better. And the opportunities are enormous. Uh, even in the midst of everything going on in the world, we're aware of it. We read the news. We know what's happening. We're not um, being uh, Pollyanna, sticking our head in the sand. We look around. We go, oh, yeah, there's this problem here. There's that one there. But we see that you can get ahead and you can conquer those problems, particularly yourself, if you take matters into your own hands and engage in learning and producing and really thinking like an entrepreneur. That's the real uh, way to get ahead today, whatever's going to happen in the world. Now, I do want to add one thing to that. Absorbing is great. Now we need to plus that with integrating what we're listening to or learning because it's great to saturate our minds. However, we really need to start applying it into our mind, into our Absolutely. lives. Absolutely. I'd put an exclamation mark behind what you just said. Very, very important that it's not just a matter of, ooh, I've read these books, oh, I've read that book, you know. It's, uh, what was it, John Stuart Mill said, that learning is great, but only what we put into action is what really matters. You know, it's great to learn all this stuff and walk around just blissing out, wow, I learned this, I learned that. Well, good for you, Sparky. Get out there and get to work. Now apply the thing. You know, make sure you're applying it, and it's the two. And the thing is, if you only are working on applying and you're not studying, then you're not doing as well. It's like you're out there too busy chopping down trees to go back and sharpen the axe. We've got to sharpen the axe, and I would say get the education so you can think, hey, there's this thing called a chainsaw that's even better than an axe. So, yeah, sharpen your axe, but study new material, find out something there, use that, and then go at it with all the strength and determination that you would have. Put the two together. And, again, like so many things in life, it's not either or. It's both and. And that's a really valid point because I'm finding what's happening a lot, especially today, is you have like old businesses that aren't savvy enough to understand that social media does enhance businesses. So they're like, well, I don't want to use social media marketing because I'm used to the old school ways. So like you said, the ax, go study and learn it now. There's a new chainsaw that has a new chain. So realize that things do evolve. Don't get so stuck in a rut or a way to not know that there is a new method or a new way. Don't be so afraid of new technology. Find someone to help you to learn new technology. As a matter of fact, I've actually sent older clients to go see the movie Chef. Did you go see the, have you seen the movie Chef? Chef? Yes. No, I'm not sent, familiar with that. Oh my God, I've sent so many older clients, older small mom and pop businesses to go see the movie Chef. So the movie Chef basically is an older man who's going through, who's already been divorced. However, he was a, like a famous chef. Um, and he was having a dispute and, and basically got fired. And his son, who's a, you know, who has, doesn't get to spend much time with, um, they, they convinced him to get a food truck. And then actually, in this movie, they actually use social media in the movie. And um, so the son, they finally convinced him to get a food truck. And mind you, he was a really good chef. And um, the son goes with him on a road trip over the summer. And the whole time through the movie, he, the father doesn't understand why there's this long line of consumers ready to buy his product. Meanwhile, he hadn't known that meanwhile his son in the truck, in the food truck, was tweeting where the food truck was going to be all along the ride through the summer. So they were showing how social media had a place in actually growing this man's business. 
So, mm. and, and my, meanwhile, the father was like, didn't know anything about social media, wanted to know anything about social media. He was finally asking his nine-year-old son, I don't know how, he was young, I think he was nine or ten, you know, can you sign me up on Twitter? Can you show me how to do this? Or, you know, show me how to do this, right? And, it, and so we get so stuck in our ways, we don't know about this or that, to understand that social media and other ways have a place. And again, marketing, it's not just old school marketing, social media does have a place in enhancing and growing business. But was, I, I'm, so I've actually sent some older clients that don't want to know about social media, don't understand how it can enhance a business, and that they're like, oh wow, now I get it. I can understand how it can actually do something. But it's a great movie. It's the first movie that I've seen with actually taking social media and actually put it into a movie. And you see Twitter flying. They actually have the bird flying every time a message goes out and a tweet goes out. Nice. And I think it's a fabulous movie that they actually show the first time I've seen, they actually physically put t social media into a movie like that. And then throughout the yeah. entire movie, Twitter's fine. <laughs> so I, I thought it was fascinating for, you know, for an older, small mom pop company to see. And that's what I mean by what you said. Don't be so stuck to think that another, another newer method or newer way can enhance. So I thought that was just marvelous. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing that. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that when it comes out on Netflix because that's a way we really enjoy watching uh, movies and to see it. But it makes sense. You've got to constantly look at new things. But then think about it. Suppose someone is uh, 60 or 70 they go, oh, I'm too old for that. Well, wait a minute. Stop. Roll it back 60 or 70 years before you were born. There was a new thing out there, whatever it was at the time. The telegraph was new at one time. The cars were new at one time. You know, even back in the 1800s and the 1700s, any time in history, there was something new and those who are willing to learn and pay the price in learning they're willing to put in their time money and effort their energy they put that TME into there they're the ones that can get ahead I think of uh, Napoleon and what he did when he was going through uh, his battles he actually did something that had not done done before and he surprised the enemy he went over the Alps he said to, his, to Napoleon's troops there are no Alps and he went, and the Germans were there, uh, the, uh, the Prussians actually thought, well, he's not going to come over. We'll wait till spring, and he'll come. And there he is, all of a sudden, and, and you know, surprised the daylights out of him. And then he also did other things. He, for instance, was the first to use backpacks, figured out what they absolutely have to have, and let his troops wear backpacks. They could move faster than the traditional way of using the horses and the um, pulling the horses and the carts behind them and all of that. It took much longer. His people were able to move faster, more rapidly than ever before, and they beat the tar out of their competition because they embraced something new. They said, it hasn't been done before. Here's something new we can try. So that's where we're going to go right now. We look at Google Plus Hangouts and think, wow, this is great. How can it get any better? Well, somebody's in a garage somewhere working on something that's going to be way cool that we're going to look back and go, wow, remember way back there in 2014? Wish I would have known about old uh, uh, Rufus and Jezebel. You know, they were together and they got this thing in their garage and they did this and it's wonderful and made a bunch of money and uh, lots of good things happening. So always keep refreshing and learning. And you know something, Carly, having that attitude keeps your brain and your body and your mind and your life fresh and alive. And that's the key to long life. Look at people that are in their 90s or in triple digits. They are doing something. They're moving, keeping happening. Those that are really out there are doing well, they keep their minds active. They keep their bodies active. By doing that and always learning something new, you're going to go much farther and uh, feel better and, and you won't smell as bad. You know, all kinds of benefits are rolled in there. So now let's get into a little bit about marketing and, and relationships because I really don't understand... People sometimes don't understand how important. Now, I also want to throw in the referrals because all of this is interconnected. Mm. Referrals, marketing, it's all, it is really all interconnected. And it goes into yep. also tribal building because referrals build your tribe and it's all interconnected with the marketing piece. Um, because you wouldn't have marketing without referrals and you wouldn't have your tribe. So let's put this together. So referrals build tribe. <laughs> And um, that all is interrelated with marketing because you wouldn't have any of that without, you know. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you hit on a really good point. That's critical because referrals, let's start with just that. It's very important. If I come out with ads all over the newspaper, all over uh, television, radio, even on social media, that's nice. But 
when it's someone that you know that says, hey, this is really good. Okay, now you got my attention. I'll, as an example, you told me the movie Chef is good. I had not heard of that before. Therefore, when it comes out, yes, I want to see it. If Carly says it's good, then it's good because you and I have very similar values. You have very similar likes in the areas. And that when you say you like it and you told me why you like it, I realize that, yeah, I would enjoy that. And so right now, that's something I want. If I had just seen an ad on it, maybe or maybe not, I'd go with it and go, okay, you know, it's a nice movie. I might think about it. But when someone that you respect and trust says, this is really good. I recommend it. That goes a lot farther. And you see, that's really the essence of social media. Social media, we've seen many times. Friends uh, on Facebook will go out and say, hey, who knows a good uh, restaurant on the north side of town or something comparable like that. And if somebody that you know and trust says in your town, oh, over on the north side, there at the corner of 4th and Main, there's uh, Terry's Pizzeria. It is great. I went there last night and it's fabulous. I recommend going you're more inclined to go to that because you had someone that you know, you like, and trust tell you, hey, go over there to Terry's Pizzeria. It's really good. They've got uh, great, and be sure and try their pasta. It's fabulous. Something like that goes a lot farther than just the advertising. And so what we have to do as small businesses, as entrepreneurs that we are, we have to realize the importance and need for referrals, asking for them, and also contributing and giving them. When you can give a referral to someone and say, hey, if you like Chinese food, go over here to this place. I went over there last week, fabulous place. Or I saw this movie that was good. Or, hey, here's a new uh, widget that I just tried. It's really helpful. As you do that, you become the resource person. You become the person that people go, hey, I want to hang around her. She's really smart. And every time she recommends somebody or something, it's cool. I like it. And so you want to make sure that you become that person. Matter of fact, uh, remember it was Dr. Stanley that told me about that, my MBA program. He was the best prof I had. Uh, Dr. Stanley for uh, strategic market planning was the class. And he talked about becoming the, the go-to person, the resource. And by the way, Dr. Stanley's first name was and is Tom. Tom Stanley, he wrote a series of books called The Millionaire Next Door and uh, did that after he had me in class. I think he had me in class, learned a lot, and then he went out and wrote all these best-selling books. I don't know if there's a correlation there, but I think the facts pretty much speak for themselves. But becoming that resource and becoming the person that people will go to is really important, and that's part of being a, a good referrer and using referrals as they should be. I think a lot of people don't, some, you know, sometimes, don't realize, and I, as you and I say the phrase a lot, no like and trust, no like and trust. And I think that applies, like you said, in anything. And I, that also goes to friends. Yep. Now, you know, when someone wants to say, hey, I think you should, you know, go talk to Terry. Well, I'm going to go talk to Terry if someone else tells me that versus, you know, and again, go, this goes through social media, Facebook, Twitter, and again, building those relationships, business, I'm going to do business this way. I'm going to go, when I go ask about a plumber, it doesn't matter. This goes through our entire lives. It's such an important phrase. Yes. And so I think people really need to get that. And it, so that goes what I'm saying, where it goes from referrals, then it goes to, you know, when it goes to business, then it goes and it goes to the marketing piece. It applies vertically, horizontally. I don't care how you go. But it's such an important phrase and applies to all aspects of life. Yes, and I think absolutely. more people need to understand that and apply that in all areas of their life. Even in relationships, when people want to introduce you to people, you know, instead of going on Match.com or whatever these dating sites are, talk to your friends. Mm -hmm. you know, look there before I would go on a dating site. Honestly, yeah. I think you know more people need to apply that phrase in all aspects of their life. Does yeah, really I think so. And I think about, when you think about it, the reason is that is because in our DNA, run it back uh, several thousand years ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, when we were running around in caves, we had to know who we can trust and who's going to look out for our best interest. And we n like to be around those people that we can trust. Because we know, hey, this person has always led me right. This person's always given me good information. And also, there's another corollary to that. Make sure that when you give a referral, that you can really stand behind it. Don't just say, oh, hey, that pizzeria over there is really good. If they go there and they have a very bad experience, ooh, that reflects not just on that pizzeria, but it reflects on you. 
even though you had nothing to do with it. It might have been good when you went there and they had a bad day or whatever. Still, that's going to reflect on you. There'll be a little ding in there, depending on what it is. If you introduce me to someone and I go, oh, okay, you said uh, that uh, uh, Schnurdly McNerf over here is really good, and I meet Schnurdly, and Schnurdly is not such a good guy, and he hurts me or he does something bad to me, I'm going to think, whoa, Carly, why did you recommend this Schnurdly guy? He did this and this and this. And so I think that's why we want, with referrals, Make sure we're very careful. Do our due diligence. Now, this is uh, take some work because it, the natural is to say, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. She's a good person or he's a good person. But if you haven't done your research, you haven't had a chance to know them, then you could open yourself up for some real negatives uh, because if uh, someone uh, finds out that that person is not good, that taints your own reputation. Do the due diligence get to know it, and also cover it. Say, hey, I just met Schnurdly. I really don't know him that well. He seems like a good guy. I think he knows uh, auto mechanics really well. Maybe he's a good auto mechanic. So you've qualified it, and I think that's important too, and part of building relationships. You want to make sure that you focus on the A and A-plus kind of activities and relationships that you can uh, develop and nurture. Understand the others, and we use those from time to time because they're important as well and depending on where we need them. But being able to understand that I think is critical. So I'm going to address two facets of that. One is what you said is absolutely critical. Yes, do your vetting. So there's two components to that. One is, especially like from my side, when I interview people, you know, everybody wants me to interview them or they want to throw a product at me. And I always say to them, I won't do that unless A, you give me the product, you know, and I mean so I can actually do the product. So I'm not going to endorse a product unless I've actually used a product. Um, so I can then say I've used the product or A, I've read the book, um, you know, so I, or, you know, I get the book so I can read it. And, and sometimes I actually know the person so then I can you know, say actually, you know, like I know Terry, I, you know, et cetera, right? Now, two, sometimes obviously you might have done your vetting or you might have you know, had a built a relationship, and then something might have happened that may not have been good. Then it is your responsibility and your due diligence to then go back to whoever you refer to and say, hey, you know, I've made a mistake. Own up to your mistakes. Do not sweep them under the carpet because, you know what, it does come back to bite you in the butt, right? So have a, be of integrity. Be a person of, you know, sound heart and go back to those people and say, hey, you know what, I made a bad judgment call. It wasn't in the best interest, and this is what happened. You know, and because occasionally, hey, we're human and things happen and the people you you thought, you know, you could trust, whatever, sometimes things happen because, you know, it does happen. I mean, I have put, been put in that position for eons ago and I did step up to the plate and say, hey, you know, I made a mistake. This person, you know, did this, or X, Y, and Z. And so now I feel like I owe you the due diligence of saying, you know, X, Y, and Z. Be honest. Don't sweep things under the carpet. It does not serve. And from, from these are just, now, I'm speaking for me. These are my values. I feel I have the integrity for me to go up. To, you know, I can tell the person they can do whatever the heck they want. They don't have to believe me. They can think whatever they want. But I feel I have to deal with just to go back to the person and say X. What they do with it after that is totally up to them. But that's just me. Um, mm -hmm. Because you know, it's life. Stuff happens. You're not always going to be 100% correct. But do your vetting. Go back. You know, don't just follow people anonymously, go check their profiles. Make sure they have a proper you know, picture. Go check their feed. Make sure they're actually putting quality content up. So don't just blindly follow people. Don't just blindly add people as friends. That's part of the problem. People who are so enamored with having you know, 10,000 followers, 5,000 friends on Facebook. So they just you know, add, 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 follow, 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 follow on Twitter. Don't do that. Have some integrity and actually check out people's Twitter feed. Or, you know, Twitter feed. Check out people's profiles so that you actually can be someone of value and integrity, and so that you can properly, like, like Terry said, you know, be able to actually say, you know, I've actually vetted these people. It does take some time, granted. But do you want to be someone that can refer properly, or do you just want to be able to just refer? So that's my little rant on that. Yeah, I think it's important that you do your due diligence. It's it's uh, sometimes difficult, and it also depends on the situation. It's like you don't check out everyone just if you're going to see if you're going to shake their hand, but you uh, find out what the person is like and where you can be. Like for instance, let's get uh, nitty gritty here on one of the social media tools that I really like a lot and want to learn more about is LinkedIn. 
I think LinkedIn is a fabulous networking tool. It's a great way to connect with people, particularly it's oriented toward business. And some people, particularly even uh, the folks at LinkedIn often say, you know, don't just accept everyone. Be sure you uh, bring them in. For me, I have a different philosophy on that. And uh, I tend to lean toward the idea, because of the work that I do, I generally accept people in most cases. By default, I accept them unless they prove themselves that they're not worthy of being a good person. Because uh, for me, in my situation, I know that some of our listeners and uh, those that are viewing this now will be in a similar situation. I'm a professional speaker. So I go out and I speak to groups often. Somebody might be in the audience. There might be a thousand people there and they're in that audience. They don't get a chance to come up and meet me. I really don't know them. They know me. And so what they do is they click. They want to stay in touch. They want to get the articles I'm producing. They want to see the, the feeds that I have there on LinkedIn. And so they want to connect and they want to be a connection there. So I accept that because of where I am. And then uh, if some, somebody comes back and starts doing a lot of selling and they start being abusive of the relationship, then at that point, we would cut them off. But I think that you have to decide what's right for you. Carly, how do you handle LinkedIn and uh, the various requests? What's your general policy? Yeah, I agree. LinkedIn's a different, a different platform. Um, what I said about um, Twitter and Facebook is a little bit different. Facebook is more of a, you know, I think more of a friend. It's, it's a very yeah. different app. That's what they call it. You're right. Exactly. So LinkedIn, I agree with you. I do accept a lot more connections on LinkedIn. Now I do look at them. If they don't have a, a picture, I do not accept. Good um, rule of thumb. Yep. Yeah, I never accept anyone who has an egghead on Twitter or no face on on LinkedIn. Um, and I also look at. I do look at if they have a description. I do go look at the profile. If they have you know something on there. Um, however, I do accept a lot more requests on LinkedIn because it is more of a business platform. You're looking to connect with people because, like you, I do. I do a lot of speaking on telesummits, and I do a lot of more different types of speaking. And like you, I'm looking. We're looking for connections. We're looking for business. We're looking for, and I do a lot of consulting. So again, you're doing, you're looking for business on LinkedIn. It's a very different platform. So I do yeah. accept a lot more connections on LinkedIn, but I do have my standards. I, you know, look for certain things. And again, like you, if I'm getting spammed or hey, uh, you know, it's an MLM looking for, uh, you know, hey, you can make, uh, you know, X amount of dollars, you know, next. Right, so you you, ha you yourself have to know your standards. You have to know what you're looking for. Depends yeah. obviously the business you're in. If you're looking to do LMM, L MLMs, or if that's your, you know, I have no issue with people. That's what they want to do. That's great. But you have to know what you're looking for and what your standards are. Um, I know a lot of people that make a lot of money doing them. That's great. I personally don't have the time for that. So that's I don't have anything against it. I just don't have the time for that. Um, so you have to know your standards and what you're looking for, and you. And you, have, and you yourself have to live with yourself. So that's, you know, you have to know your values. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be different for each person. And you have to decide what is right for you and how you're going to do it. You experiment. And also, this goes back to having a good community, having a good tribe. Because uh, you and I, matter of fact, we've sat down many times, usually over Skype or uh, Google Plus Hangout or something, and just talk about things. Yeah, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And by having people you can trust in your life, that you realize, okay, this person is very knowledgeable in that area, you have a much greater reservoir to tap into it and be able to sit down and I can say, Carly, I've heard about da 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 da, what do you think about that? Oh, well, Terry, I like this and I think it's really good, particularly in this area. Or, Terry, just between you and me, I'd stay away from that. It's not as good, my experience was bad, or whatever it is, you need that kind of uh, network those kind of people that you can trust and it comes over time you build that by getting to know someone having many different experiences over multiple occasions and that to me is really what relationship building and relationship marketing is all about you market building relationships building people's best interest in in mind and doing what you can to provide value and I think that's a, a real key point it's value for value that means you don't come in saying, hey, give me this, give me that, give me this. You've got to provide lots of value. Help the other person. And by doing that, then you earn the credibility. You earn the right to have that relationship with that person. This is true in personal relationships. It's uh, definitely true in business. You know, also, since you're always getting involved in little gadgets and techie tools, what are some of the latest new little gadgets that you've been uh, playing with or discovered lately? I'm always curious to find out some of the gadgets you've been playing with lately. 
Let me see. Uh, I'm looking at one. I can't see it right here. Somewhere in my office. I, um, I just got a thing the other day. Real tiny little uh, can hold like it's about so big or so two. Of, there's two of them. It's a microphone that is wireless from Sony. And uh, I forget the exact the ECM WA4 or something like that. But if you look at Sony wireless microphone, you'll be able to find it. And it's real tiny. This is good when you want to do some recording and you want to record someone who is a little bit farther away. Microphones are important. The voice quality. For instance, Carla, we talked about this before. We were getting things ready. How is my voice coming through right now? It's you're coming through very, very clear. And my Yeti was not cooperating earlier. Yes, I, got a brand new, I got a brand new computer, and my Yeti was not cooperating. So, yeah. um, as a matter of fact, um, don't forget to send me because I, as everyone knows, I always put together a really nice blog post that has the embedded podcast and video, and I always put links and little tips and tools of whatever. And with Terry, he always has new little gadgets and stuff. So, Terry, you're going to send me later a picture of your little gadget and the name and stuff on it. I'll put it in the blog post later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's we'll a, also put a picture of the Yeti and the and the you know the type and the. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, there it is. See, yeah, we can yes, do this just for, okay. Don't tell any of the grown-ups, but this is what it is <laughs> right here. See, we've got this, and it's. No, by the way, notice what I'm doing here. I'm giving some kind of inside uh, baseball stuff here. What I do is I put it down there, and you'll notice it's positioned so you don't see it, but right. it just comes across well. See, if I were using my Yeti, and yeah. my Yeti wasn't behaving. It was not powering up, so it was not yeah. behaving. It, there might be some I'd want to look at it, make sure the cables are in. I'd pr first thing I would do is call Blue Microphones and talk to their support. As Blue Microphones is the manufacturer of the Yeti microphone, and they are wonderful, absolutely wonderful people. But let me go back to the Sony microphone. This is a remote, and so it's I could have the one part here, and then you would have it way over there, up to 150 feet away on the camcorder or the iPhone or the uh, Galaxy uh, uh, S5, whatever you're going to use for recording, and you're able to get really good audio quality. Because, like, for example, right now, my voice is coming through okay. It's because my microphone, my Yeti I'm using for this, is right here. But if I'm back here, notice it doesn't sound quite as good. And this is what it sounds like when you don't use a microphone. But if you use the external microphone and you put it right there with the computer right near it, it's right near your voice. Actually, mine is about this far apart from my lips right down there to the microphone. So it comes across well. It is uh, resonating. It sounds good. Now, people usually aren't going to say, yes, that's coming through in 16-bit uh, quality and uh, we feel that 48 kilohertz, it is really coming across that well. No, they don't say that. They just go, yeah, it sounded good. It sounded like you were right there and that's what you want. The most important part of video is audio. People can tolerate a video image that's not quite as good, maybe a little bit grainy now and then, providing that they can hear you clearly. You want to make sure of that, and you don't want to have it sound like you're in a cave somewhere off uh, in a distance. That's why um, I recommend getting that, or here's another thing I use, little gadget I use, little over-the-ear microphone. I take this, put it on like so, and then I can wander around, and the other end of it, by the way, is right here. See, it's, here, let me show you the detail of this. See, this is the little eighth-inch mini plug that you've seen, and I use this, which goes into a USB port, and just plug this guy right in there, and now I can plug this into my computer so that when I want to create a video where I'm standing up or walking around or moving around, something like a, If you ever watch a Stefan Molyneux in his uh, podcast, number one podcast in the world on philosophy called Free Domain Radio, he stands there and he uses different kinds of microphones. You can tell, uh, and you can tell when he's not using one, but use, most of the time he does. A microphone is a really good investment. And that Sony is one I just bought. It was uh, how much was it? about two hundred and twenty dollars, two hundred thirty dollars or so. And uh, I'm, I don't sell it. They don't pay me a commission. I just bought it uh, like you would. But it's a really good one if you're doing presentations and speeches. Record yourself and grab that content and share it because as you share it. That helps building relationships and marketing because people get a chance to see you operating as you would in the real world. This is exactly why I do these, and I try to tell all my clients, you need to start doing podcasts or videos. That's why, as you know, I do these, and then I pull the VL and create a podcast. And I think more people need to understand why we do these. As I've explained to many people, they go, why won't you do the interview with me on the phone? I said, because you know what? When you do an interview over the phone, you're tripping over each other, I can't see your lips when you stop. And not only that, 
by doing a video with Terry and I, what? We have hands, we have voice, we have dynamics. So by the time my editor pulls Terry and I's voice off this video and creates a podcast from it, the podcast is so much richer. You yes. can hear the animation, you can hear the diptongs, the tonations, you can almost feel the dance. So the podcast is so much richer. Right? Yep, and so, absolutely. And so it's, it makes, and again, some people are visual, so they're going to want to watch Terry and I. Some people are going to be, you know, in the car and download it or you know, listen to the iTunes, you know, plugging in, plugging into the car with their, with their iPod or whatever phone they have, and they're going to listen to the podcast. But everybody's different, audio, visual, you know, whatever. So I create both, a video and a podcast, and then both on my page. So like you, you have to be able to reach all types of audiences and give people the choice of what they want to do. So I encourage everyone to think multi-sensory. We are multi-sensory beings. Everybody is different. Some people want to read. Some people want to listen. Some people want to watch. And by doing these, you're getting people to understand who you are. What are your passions? What is your content? What are you good at? What, what is your business? So these types of shows are, are literally your marketing. Get out there and start getting people to know who you are what is, and, and what is it that you're, you're not knowledgeable about. These are your marketing cards, if you will, and, and, and they're not hard to do. I mean, seriously, it's very easy to do Google Hangout. It's not hard. It's not easy to upload it. Google Hangouts dump right into your YouTube channel, and you, you, know, you can edit them or not edit them. You can put, you know, graphics in front of them very easily or, you know, there's so many things you can do. Yeah, absolutely. And today it's much easier than ever before. It's cheaper than ever before, and uh, we can do it. And it's and then now with the combination of the great technologies, the great sound that we can get from audio, the great video we can get from many of the webcams that are out today, and couple that with the speed of the internet that is now much faster than it was years ago, where it was just pathetically and painfully slow. Now we've got it in mo in many areas where you can get really good free flowing uh, connection and it's working. For instance, what we're doing right now is coming across very well. We both are uh, have, we have uh, good connections. What what is your speed on your internet connection, Carly? Just out of curiosity. I don't know right now. I also want to address one other thing because this is really important. Thinking of third world countries, the reason why I don't know these really really high resolution is. You and I are in the United States. We have a very high HD cable coming through whatever server, you know, whatever cable company you're using. You also have to think about third world countries. So when I upload these to Vimeo, I upload them to both. I upload them to Google, I mean to YouTube, I let it dump into YouTube, but I also upload these to Vimeo, to my Vimeo channel. Think third world countries too. If you upload these at the highest quality, they're not going to be able to download them in third world countries because they don't have the speed that we do. So think about that as well. You may want it to be the highest HD quality. Think about third world countries. If you have everything uploaded to the highest quality ever, they are not going to be able to watch them. Yeah, you're, you're a very good point, and not just third world countries, but also you could be in, uh, uh, country, we're number seven, I believe, in the world. We're behind Latvia and uh, Netherlands and many other countries here in the United States, but uh, if you go to a place even in Korea, which is number one in the world, they've got incredible speed. There could be places in Korea, you get too far off, the, uh, the shore out of the beaten way where you're not going to have strong bandwidth. You want to be able to be responsive and reflex and be able to adjust. Just build that into the technology. That's where doing it on YouTube makes a lot of sense because they give you the ability to adjust. It will adjust that, oh, you can handle 1080p? Great. We'll give it to you at really dazzling, beautiful color. But, oh, it's not coming through as well. You can downscale it so it goes back to something much, much lower. And I like that. I like the idea of being able to adjust for the circumstances where you are. I do a lot of work in places around the United States, and there's some places where bandwidth is just really, really tough and it's hard to get good strong bandwidth. Well, for the reasons that you're saying, Carly, very important to have the choice available. And the other thing is, I also want to point out, if you look at the bottom of the video, um, which we call video land, the lower third, when you're doing these videos, this is called self-marketing. At the bottom of our, our videos, we have our name and we have our website, right? So the entire time you're watching this, you're also self-marketing yourself. People now know they can go to my website or they can go to Terry's right so these are valuable tools 
I mean, you know, yeah. so again, these are marketing cards. I mean, it's not, that's not why we do them, but I'm just saying, think about your business. Think about what you're doing, what, who you are, what it is the message you want to put out there. So these are really valuable, and we're talking about relationship marketing. So that's why I wanted to bring up these little tools. So I'm, I'm saying these are easy things to do. These are great ways to get your voice out there, to also bring value to other people, and there's so many things to do. Uh, so on Google Hangout, it says, it'll have the lower third, but it'll say, put your name, and it says, enter your tagline. And I suggest people don't enter your tagline, put your website. So that way people know how to find you. So the whole yes. time the video's playing, it's like, oh, I just have to go here. Right? So there's so many unique ways to actually get your message out there. Yeah. And again, the other thing is don't make them an hour long. Okay? Because people are not going to stay tuned for an hour. Unless you're like super witty like like. Like Terry, because Terry always has expressive facial expressions, and and him and I have a lot of energy. You know, if you're someone, that, and again, I'm not putting anyone down here, but know yourself. If you're someone that yeah. doesn't have really animated, and you don't use your hands, and you're not a very high energy person, make sure they're really short. Make sure they're maybe 15 minutes, you know, under 20 minutes. Know yourself. Doesn't make you doesn't make us right and you wrong. Just know your personality. Not everybody is hyper. I mean, I am a little hyper, right? And I know that about myself. I'm, I'm talking my hands. I'm animated. Terry's a very facial expression. He's, a, he's an animated speaker, right? That's just who we are. Know yourself. Get comfortable with the camera. You know, start playing. But just be true to yourself. Don't be who you're not because people are going to see that. You have to be authentic in yourself. That's the key to this. If you're attempting to be someone you're not, it's not going to work. Yep, absolutely. Make sure that you are doing what is right for you and get to know the tools because with these tools you can find what works best for you. Some people market predominantly through a podcast. Some market predominantly through their blog. Some market in other ways. There's so many tools out there that uh, it can get a little bit confusing trying to do everything. So don't try that. Find what is best for you, where you fit in the best, and what is most comfortable for you and particularly for your market, and then build those relationships that way. That is a critical thing. We've got, um, as you know, uh, my partner Gina and I, we've uh, done a lot with relationship marketing, and recently we put together a relationship marketing you. People getting involved in there now, it's just getting started. People already signing up for it and there to get regular training on the technology and the soft skills on how to build relationships. And so I would encourage everyone watching this, think about how you can build relationships in your business, for your career, and of course in your personal life. Your quality of life is largely determined by the quality of the relationships that you have. And when you have good, strong relationships in business, it helps you in business. People want to help you. I mean, like you were saying about putting your name, when I can see, I'm looking at it right now on the screen here with uh, CarlyElizaThorne.com, that's actually a gift to me. Because if I'm listening to you, Carly, and I go, boy, she is so good. What is her name again? And I have to wonder what it is, and I don't see it, then that, that's a disservice. But by you putting that there, it makes it very nice. You're not hammering it at us, it's just there. And I like that, that people say, hey, I like this person. I want to find out more about them. Have your website there, and they can go to the website and look around, be comfortable, have a good time to find out what is available. Well, speaking of that, I think you and I have spent a wonderful time together as usual. I always love talking to you. So thank you so much for spending time with me out of your busy schedule. Is thank there you. Any it's always last, good to see you. Is there any last wonderful tidbits you'd love to leave the audience? I think focus on what matters in life. Life is too short to spend it on things that don't matter. Don't get involved in hate. Don't get involved in hurting, although there are times you might think that, hey, I should, you know, I have a justification to hurt this person. Don't do that. Don't get down in that. Instead, wish people well, move on, and constantly improve your life and look for the better people. Build quality relationships. Build relationships that are going to be value for value based, mutually beneficial. Watch out for the people that have what I call eye trouble. People that, I don't mean uh, EYE, I mean the letter I. I did this and I did that. I'm doing this and me, 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 I, I, I. Watch out for those people. When you see them, wish them well and then move along. 
You want to spend your life investing in helping make the world a better place, making your life better, achieving and producing the goals that you want. I think that is the essence of life, is achieving and having your own happiness. I go by the philosophy of Ayn Rand. And she talked about that a lot. Of Your highest goal is your happiness and being there. And I think the wonderful thing about it is we achieve happiness for ourselves as we help others be happy. It's what the free market is all about, being able to help others. We help ourselves best. And Carly, it is always wonderful to be here. Those of you that are watching this, this is a wonderful lady. If you're just meeting her now and you're seeing her, go over to her website. Look around. Notice the material that she has. She's helped a number of different people, and your life can be better because you know Carly. And so thank you very much for having me on board today. I really appreciate it, Carly. And since this is a podcast, can you please let everyone know where they can find you? Yes, they can find me over at terrybrock.com. That's spelled T-E-R-R-Y, and Brock is spelled the right way, B-R-O-C-K. So terrybrock.com, and you can go over there, look into uh, what we've got. You'll see information, and I mentioned our Relationship Marketing University we have. If you go to relationshipmarketingu, the letter U.com, you'll see the information on that and find out all kinds of good ways that you can build into your business and your personal life as well. Quality relationships, learn, grow, using the technology and using the best uh, tried and true principles that we have found work throughout the century. So uh, have a wonderful life and continue learning. Hope to see you a little bit farther on down the road. Awesome. Thank you so much, Terry. Always a joy. Well, you've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can find me at carlylissathorne.com, C-A-R-L-Y-A-L-Y-S-S-A-T-H-O-R-N-E.com. I look forward to bringing you more valuable content next week. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a wonderful, joyous day, everyone. Bye for now.